the freedom that you feel when you skate outside versus inside is unlike any other. High in the mountains, on frozen alpine lakes like this one, Laura Kutlowski skates like you've never seen before. There's a sky over your head and like either the wind to your back or just like no wind at all. And you see the reflection of the clouds or the sky in the ice and it's kind of like a perfect mirror. You're in this like magical world. She blurs the lines between heaven and earth, sport and art. I think the novelty of creating art on outdoor, like black ice, is still very exciting to me. My blade is essentially drawing art, but what's enabling my blade to draw that art is my years and years and years of skating. The challenge is in the technical ability to have a pattern or a shape in my head and then be able to skate it. Kutlowski is one of just a few alpine figure skaters in the country. The skating of school figures goes back a very long way to the very beginning of the sport. Her art, skating figures, has been around since the Victorian era. Look at him, look over his left shoulder. So that and evolved into the sport we know today. But while the practice of skating literal figures fell out of fashion in the 80s, the first figure, we see it here, was the rocker. The name figure skating stuck. This has some patterns that like, look at that. Like that is so wild. See, it's cool to uh, try to figure these patterns out because I know from uh, my experience with moves in the field, like this is rocker right there. For Laura, it's a way of connecting to the history of a sport that's been a lifelong love. Competing when I was younger, like I definitely had my eye on the Olympics. Like I think every young figure skater does. It was my world, it was my life. My parents are working class parents. The financial stressors of figure skating were already there. It quickly got to a point where like, I was increasing in age, but I didn't get my double axle and I wasn't landing any triples yet. So I kind of knew that I was not gonna make it, like I wasn't on the track. It is kind of frustrating when you realize that and when you figure that out. Olympic dreams dashed. Laura started skating less as she turned to a more conventional life path. I got my degree in graphic design at Penn State, and so I'm very much doing my passion now, but there was a little bit of, like, sadness in me that, like, I kind of, I had to let it go because of, like, societal norms and the career track and all of that. But it was a devastating injury on the ice which threatened to ground Laura for good. I ended up pulling a disc in my lower back. It was a major stress and like sadness um, in my life at that point. The once high flying girl now feared she would never take flight again. But her love for the ice would actually become a path to her healing. The figures for me were like the perfect activity to be able to do and go back to when I was nursing this injury. Because it was a compressed disc in my back, I couldn't jump or do anything like super interactive with my upper body. One day on a winter hike in 2008, Kudlowski discovered the perfect canvas for her newfound artistry, her rekindled passion. The first time I got to skate in Rocky Mountain National Park, it was incredible. The whole ice wasn't like smooth and wasn't pristine. There was patches of snow, like half of the ice was covered in snow. But I do remember like being able to do some jumps and spins up there and how incredible that was. And I just like have kind of fallen in love with that ever since. Like the merriment of the beauty of the outdoors and the beauty of the sport. I mean, that's where our sport began, outdoors. Like it didn't, wasn't born in an arena. It was born outside. High in the mountains over Colorado, Laura finds her peace and her pace, cutting figures into fresh ice with mechanical precision.
you have to really think about like the micro muscles in your foot when you're doing it, but it's very meditative. I think I've uniquely found my own lane in the sport and like kind of recombining all of my passions into one thing. But finding pristine ice in the wild is no easy feat. Earlier this year, we joined her on the hunt for that elusive canvas. I like to tell people that like, the comparison of what this is, is like rarer than a powder day when you find pristine ice. You have to have those perfect conditions where it's super high alpine and it hasn't snowed in a while. The search for a perfect lake was more like a search for a needle in a haystack. Winds whipping from trailhead to trailhead. I don't see Crystal Lake here on the map. Heart Lake up in Nederland, Colorado is very beautiful. We went around to Breckenridge around Lake Dillon. Blue Lake, Wheeler Lake, Crystal Lake. Finally, after an eight hour day braving the elements, a little patch of ice, though far from pristine, an artist finding her canvas. It ended up being like a blast because this patch that we found that was skatable created this little obstacle course because there are like little patches of snow here and there and I was able to skate through things, do some fun footwork and, you know, pop over patches of snow, play around a little bit. It ended up being like a magical day. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.